I'm just going to speak about seeking and soaking in God's presence. You know, this year, God has been um, speaking to us about prayer. He's been speaking to us about, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not keep quiet until he's righteous to till her righteousness goes forth like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. Foreign countries will see your righteousness and world leaders your glory. You'll get a brand new name straight from the mouth of God. And so God is causing us to burn bright this year. He's causing us to burn bright, but it's through something, through being in connection with him. It's through prayer. It's through his presence. It's through being released through his power into his purpose. And so we've thought about that with the global word as well. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you'll be my witnesses. You know, there's a transformation that takes place when we meet the presence of God. And we become who we're really meant to be. I, I just sensed that in the worship today. And I sensed in the worship today that... People's spirits were leaping. Did you notice that there was a leaping in your spirit of, I've got to jump. I've got to move to who I really am. You know, because I am somebody different in my new creation reality and in the spirit to who I am with my fears and my worries and my anxieties and my everydayness. But there's something leaping inside me that is a brand new creation that wants to walk in something completely new, in something completely different. And so we receive power and we become these burning bright witnesses for him. And so through prayer, we connect with him, which releases us into his presence, which releases us into his power, which then releases us into our purpose. And prayer, uh, Charles Spurgeon said, was the engine room of the church. You know, he was, as I said last time, he was preaching to a church of 6,000 people. He planted half the Baptist churches in London, I think about 150 of them or so uh, in his 20s. People would come to see what was, the, what was going on there. But he always said that actually the secret was the basement. It was the engine room of prayer connecting with God in that real relationship with him. And he said if the engine room is out of action, then the whole meal will grind to a halt. We cannot expect blessing if we do not ask. And so we thought about that last time. You know, Jesus said, ask and it will be given you. And today we're going to look at seek and you'll find. And when we seek God's presence, we find him. And so no great revival comes without us connecting in with the presence of God. God says, I've, I've posted watchmen on your walls, Jerusalem, that will never keep silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give him no rest and give yourselves no rest till he establishes Jerusalem, the, the, the city of well-being, as a praise in all the earth. I believe God's doing something right now where he's establishing his church as the place of well-being where the place people can be healed, where the place people can be set free, where the place people can become all that they are meant to be. And so that's key at this time. And so three types of prayer at this time we've been thinking about. And uh, today we're looking at seeking, seeking and soaking in his presence. And um, the first thing I just want to say about that is God wants you God wants you to um, seek him. God wants you to seek him. That's the first thing to say. God wants you to seek him. He wants you to, to draw close to him. He wants you to build relationship with him and give time to that and to make space for that. And I've been doing that over the last few weeks as we've come into the new year. That's one of the things that God said to me, to make more time for God. And I've been doing that each day, just making more time for God just to, to pray in tongues, just to listen to him, to meditate on his word and just let him impart. And I would encourage you, even if it's three minutes more <laughs> or five minutes more, whatever your time is right now, just to make that little bit of extra time, just to be in the presence of God and listen to God and hear God. And so I say to you, ask, Luke 11, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will open. Ask, seek, knock three types of prayer that we're kind of summarizing all prayer into. I know we could break it down into a lot more. Um, for everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be open. Jesus is encouraging us to press in to our presence, to into the presence of God, um, into our relationship with him. 
And so he wants us to seek him. And, you know, when you start to seek him, some of the most beautiful times, some of the most powerful times, some of the most transformational times in my whole life have been in the presence of God. Well, I found myself weeping. I found myself laughing. I found myself in deep times of intimacy with the creator, with the Father God. And times where things that have been in me that I thought would never change have disappeared. And I've found a deliverance and a freedom. And I've come out of that time of prayer free from something that was like chewing gum that was sticking to my soul. And so when we get into the presence of God, we become who God's really made us to be. And I just love hearing all the testimonies, all the things that God is doing. Because God is showing us that the more we draw close to him, the more he brings transformation, the more we are liberated into who we're meant to be. And so I say to you, Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. The one who seeks finds. And so today I want to talk about seeking the presence of God. You know, we've got some incredible examples of that in people like King David, who sought the presence of God. I love David because he was a, a king, wasn't he? He wasn't a perfect man by any means. I won't go into all his flaws now, but we know quite a lot of them. <laughs> um, I think they include murder and adultery. But anyway, um, and but he was someone that God said... It was after his own heart because he would go and where's the king? He's gone into the tabernacle, into the tent, and he's seeking God. He's what's he doing right now? He's playing his harp. What's he doing right now? He's dancing before the what's the king doing? He's dancing before the Lord in the presence of, in the temple. Because he knew to be a real man of strength, to be a real king reigning in life, he needed to be dependent on the presence of God. And true power comes through true humility. Amen? Where we know we need God. When anyone says, well, you're so weak, I don't need God, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. They may be coming to a Nebuchadnezzar moment where they said, look at all this, I did it all myself. Bomb. And suddenly they'll find themselves in chaos. They'll find themselves rummaging around with nothing because actually they didn't realize where the blessing came from. And so God wants us to be seeking him. You know, and he says, in that, he says he wants to give good things to his children. So isn't that a great thing to know, that God loves you so much, he wants to give you good things. So you can seek him. Spend time seeking him. And David, in Psalm 1611, said, you will make known to me the way of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. He knew where the secret was. He knew it wasn't in the circumstance. You know, he knew it wasn't in that everything's working well that every relationship is going perfectly, that my boss is being kind to me. Who knew the fullness of joy was not in that? He knew the fullness of joy was in God's presence. In your right hand are pleasures forever. And when we start to draw close to God, we start to realize, wow, there's a joy, there's a fullness, there's a freedom in the presence of God where he will give you a download and he will show you things you never realized you could know. And, you know, some of my best times with God is when, well, I can't really say they're my best times. There's so many best times with God. But, but one of my best times with God is where I'm just in the presence of God and I'm feeling the heart of God and the joy of God. But then he's suddenly, have you ever had the year he starts giving you downloads? Wow, wow, whoa, whoa, wow, wow. And suddenly, even things you saw in a different way, you suddenly see in a brand new way. You suddenly see God's doing something here, or God's behind something here. There's a strategy here. And that's what overcomes the schemes of the enemy. Because the enemy, as, as, as we've been hearing today, would keep us distracted. Um, but with the newspapers, we were saying, but actually God has a greater plan that he's working out in your life. Don't listen to the voices. Listen to the voice. Amen? Because God wants to speak beautiful things and pleasurable things into your life. So, God wants us to seek him. That's the first thing. So, take some time in this year. Take some time in this week just to put some time aside and be silly like King David. Be awkward like King David. And take just five minutes in the bathroom to get some extra time with God. Amen? <laughs> Secondly, in his presence, you grasp whose you are. Wow, I'm actually a child of God. I'm actually a son of God. I'm actually a daughter of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You know, and suddenly that realization comes, and that keeps you young. You know, sometimes, talks now, we say, you know, we feel young, <laughs> we feel joyful. 
Sometimes, you know, I won't tell you our age, but sometimes we look and we, we see some 20-year-olds and we say, they're older than us. <laughs> they're older than us. They got, they're so burdened with life, you know? You know, but, uh, you know, but we believe in the presence of God. It keeps you young when you know who God says you are. You know, you feel like jumping and everyone else is going, well, you feel like jumping <laughs> because God is with you. It keeps you young. So in his presence... You grasp whose you are. You grasp whose you are. Amen? Um, For all who are being led, that word led is gently led, or it has a sense of governed. Governed by the Spirit of God. In other words, when you get in the Spirit, you listen to God. He governs you in a different way to the world. The world drives you, but God gently leads you. God gently whispers his truth to you. And you begin to think a new way. And like we heard today, and I think a lot of the testimonies were very good in that, weren't they? A lot of the testimonies were very good in, I've got a choice of how I think. Things will be presented to me. But am I going to be governed by his spirit and think his way? You know, I was praying the other night. As I was praying. I was sleeping the other night. And I was com- confronted in my dream with something quite demonic. It was very strong, though. And something was going on. Um, some of you will know what I'm talking about. I was just, and I had to really pray. And the strategy that God gave me to use was there was this really uh, ugly being kind of confronting me. And so the strategy I used wasn't, oh my God, let's go, oh Jesus, God help me. It was, <laughs> that was the strategy. I just laughed, just laughed because he's, he's a toothless lion, you know? And sometimes he tries to scare you with things. You just need to laugh. Because in his presence is fullness of a joy, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. So we're governed by his spirit. We're governed by what he says, that we overcome the bear and the lion like David did as he worshipped God, as he looked after the sheep. Amen? Because he knew who his God was. Then when Goliath came along, who's that circumcised dog defying the armies of the living God? He had a different attitude to it. Because he knew who his God was, and he knew who he was. For all who are led, governed by the Spirit of God, these are the sons and daughters of God. Now, the actual word there is one word. It's the word huios, which actually means it's the word that was used for Jesus as a mature son. So those who are governed by God become mature sons of God. That's men and women. That's why it says sons and daughters, because it's A generic word that means we've got the sun in us, the spirit of the sun, whether we're a man or a woman, yeah? And so we become mature in our thinking and starting to think as the mature son does when we allow him to govern our thinking. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters or the spirit of the adoption of, a, of the son of God. You know, in the Roman world, being adopted as a son, as I said the other week, meant you got all the rights of a Roman citizen. There were only about 10%, I think, maybe a little bit more, of citizens in Rome that were Roman citizens. And they had great authority and everything. And you could, as a, as a, as a Roman citizen, take a slave and say, you're my son, adopt him as your son. And he now had every, all the rights of a son. He would inherit everything. And so God has taken us out of slavery and he said, we're his sons. We're his daughters. And we have every, the full inheritance that God has. It belongs to us. And so it's thinking a different way. And then when we get into the presence of God, you know what we find? We cry out, Abba, Father. Suddenly there's a connection with God. There's a relationship. He's not just almighty God, far in the heavens. We do respect him. But he's actually father, Abba, father, dad, father. Our sp- his spirit testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. You're now offspring of God. So something about being in God's presence gets you to know who you are. Uh, we realize who you, whose we are and who we are. Amen? And that's so important because then you will be secure and you can laugh at the, what the devil tries to bring at you. Hey, it's okay because I know that I'm a child of God. Hey, you blemming, blah, 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 blah. God bless you, mate. Because you know you're a child of God. Because sometimes you'll, you'll get that, won't you? Maybe you drive slightly wrongly or you do something in the street and someone is just pent up with anger and boom, it all comes out of you. Don't take that as your identity. You're just 
Yeah, God bless you, mate. That's what I say to people when they do it. I say, yeah, God bless you. <laughs> Don't get caught in their stuff. Don't get caught in their stuff. God bless you. <laughs> secondly, is it secondly? Yes, yeah, secondly. Thirdly, thank you. Thank you, that was helpful. <laughs> We get, I think we're getting cut off at the... Oh, no, it's up there. It's just over there. So right. In his presence, we receive our inheritance as a kingdom family. You know, when you get into God's presence, you start to realize what you have and what God has given you to inherit. Because once you know who you are, you know what belongs to you. And so when we seek God, we start to really know what belongs to us. And that's why we need time in his presence. And so we begin to know who we are. And when, So we have to be. You have to know who you are. And the first stage of that is not rushing out and doing stuff. Because if you don't really know who you are, you won't act out of your values. You'll, you'll act out of panic. You'll act out of, I've got to do this. Blah, blah, blah. you suddenly not being who you really are. And so be who you are. That's why time in God's presence and meditating, when you really know who you are, once you know who you are, be who you are. This is who I am. This is my values. I'm a new creation. Don't jump. Don't react. Be who you are. When you be who you are, then you can do. Now you begin to act out of whose you are and who you are. And your actions start to align with your values. Otherwise, have you ever looked and said, now why on earth did I do all of that? That's got nothing to do with what I actually believe. That's got nothing to do with my paradigm or my real beliefs. It's because you didn't know who you were enough. You didn't settle on who you are. You didn't meditate on who you are. You didn't take it as your identity properly and get that established in your soul. Once it's established in your soul, I don't have to grab for this. I don't have to react to this because you know, I know who I am. Now I act out of my beliefs. I act out of my values. And when we be and we do, that becomes habitual and we have. Be, do, have. We enter our inheritance. Because when we habitually act as a new creation, we get new creation fruit. We get the answers to prayer. It's what Martin mentioned about what God spoke to us in our soaking time, which was intimacy. Then we res out, when we really know, yes, I'm a child of God, we don't come up, it's not like, oh, I'm a child of God. Then, Whoa! No, 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 no. Oh, I'm a child of God and Hey, that's not going to affect me because I know who I am. And you continue to act out of who you are. Respond rather than react. And so we're obedient to what God says to us. And when we're obedient to what God says to us, then we see the blessings flow. And that flows in community. Because we're really obedient to being community. We really act out community. Whereas I might know what's right in my head, but I haven't, I haven't established it in my heart. It's like, oh, yeah, we don't, we don't backbite. We share with each other honestly and lovingly, and we, we do the right thing. But if I haven't got it established in my heart, what I do is, Martin did that to me. And do you know what Martin did to me? Do you know what my... Oh, don't listen to... Don't trust Martin. <laughs> and that's what happens. <laughs> because... I acted out of my panic. I acted out of my emotions and my, my filter from past history and not out of my intimacy with God and who I really am and obedience to him. So next time I feel like that, what do you say, God? Just go and tell Martin you love him. Martin, love you, mate. <laughs> oh, there was one thing I needed to mention. You know, the other day when that happened, I wasn't sure whether, you know, were you, was that something... Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. I just thought that was a bit much, you know, getting me to pay for all the drinks. In <laughs> and so I have an honest conversation with him, and that heals the situation. So now I've acted out of my uh, uh, intimacy in obedience, which has produced blessing, which has now blessed actually the whole community. Because I could have brought destruction to the community by my reaction and, and my device. So now I'm walking in who God says I am. And that's what we see in the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayer. Good, you're still with me. <laughs> and so we seek God. And when we seek God, out of that comes a depth 
um, in our relationship with God. And you know, no great revival or move of God like it did in the New Testament ever happened without intimacy with God, without seeking and soaking in the presence of God. And we can see that the early church did that here. And um, John Wesley talks about a time when the Holy Spirit came. And we know the Wesleyan revival completely transformed our society. In fact, to the fact where we, we, we didn't have a massive revolution and chop our monarch's head off, you know? Um, and uh, where society became much, much better and conditions and the blessings we have today came out of that revival. And John Wesley talks about about three o'clock in the morning as we were continuing instant in prayer. The power of God came mightily upon us in as much that many cried out for exceeding joy and many fell to the ground. As soon as we recovered a little from the awe and amazement at the presence of his majesty, we broke out with one voice. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. It was intimacy in the presence of God that started to break something out. And we've had quite a lot of revivals and Toronto blessings and all kinds of things have happened since then. The Pentecostal movement, all kinds of things, charismatic movement. There's something happening at the moment some of you have probably heard about. Yeah, just in the last eight, eight I think it's 11 days now. And, and uh, there's something happening right now in Asbury University, Kentucky, there's a revival going on. There's a refreshing going on. Um, and Gen Zs have just started worshipping together. And they had a, a kind of, it was it's a Christian university. They just had a, an average meeting. And afterwards, they just kept on worshipping and worshipping and worshipping. And this has been going on now for 11 days. And people are, people are coming from other universities. And now the fire has spread to other universities. And now people are flying down from Canada to come to see what's going on. Um, and even the, 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 the regular TV, Fox News and everything, wanted to come and film it. They said, no, we just want this to be God. We don't want any massive publicity. So how do we know about it? The reason you know about it, because it's Gen Z, isn't it? So of course you know about it. <laughs> it's on TikTok. <laughs> 30, you know, 33, I think it was 33.5 million views so far of this revival that is happening. Um, um, that was three days ago, so it's probably more than that now. So these are extraordinary times where the presence of God is moving and things are happening. This was a report from the independent newspaper. So God is at work. And even with what um, um, Sham was sharing, we've been at the turning this week. And again, the turning is about being in the presence of God. A team came over from Sweden and we met together and we'd just been meeting in the presence of God for three days in a row. So I've had lots of presence of God time uh, this week. We just spend whole evenings in the presence of God. And there's been some powerful encounters. There's been some incredible prophetic words that have been coming and confirmations and things that have been happening in all of our lives. We prayed for the young people and God did things and some of them were released in the spirit and all kinds of stuff was going on and then they prayed for us and prophesied to us. So there's been some great stuff going on. And um, as we went out there, this was, I think this was the Thursday, uh, Thursday, no, Friday, and this was the Saturday group. And um, as we've been going out there, God's been doing great things. So over, you know, we've had about 14 people going out each day. Out of that, we've blessed 110 people in the streets of Acton, Ealing, and Greenford. Um, many of them from different backgrounds, Hindu, Muslims, um, even those that would call themselves atheists or just don't know. Uh, one situation I had with one guy, um, I won't say any names, um, you know, he just thanked us for speaking to him. He said, I can't believe this is happening right now. 20-year-old guy, young guy, and he said, I can't believe this is happening right now. You know, I've, I've been going through so much in my life, and um, i had be, been suicidal and all kinds of things. And we were able to just uh, minister God's love to him. Uh, one of the Swedish girls there, the one who's third from the left, she's quite shy. She didn't even want to go on the street, but she gave him... Uh, song to listen to, you know, and, and stuff like that. And then he prayed and he asked Jesus to come into his heart and into his life. So praise God. And that's just one testimony out of many because out of the 110 blessings that we prayed for people on the streets, 27 prayed the prayer of salvation over the three days. And out of that, 15 have given their details to be followed up. In fact, immediately after today's meeting, I'll be going down to Acton's McDonald to meet with someone to start discipling them who gave their life to the Lord. So God is at work, but this comes out of the presence of God. If we just looked at the news, 
We say, no one's interested in God. Nothing's going to happen if you talk to someone on the street. Uh, We're in a secular society. That's the noise. The truth is people are desperately hungry for God right now. And the Spirit of God is moving. And so let's keep seeking him. Let's keep knocking. Let's keep asking because he is there and he's doing things. So everyone was filled with awe. So there was prayer. That's our first P, isn't it? Everyone was filled with awe. That's presence. That's our second P. Many signs and wonders were performed. That's power. That's our extra P from the global prophetic. Yeah? And all the believers were together and had everything in common. That's purpose. They sold their property and possessions and they gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and met together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. You know, that's what our life groups are to be places where we praise God and people come in and they start to grow. And people can get saved through just coming to your house and your life group and just meeting Jesus there. That's what it's for, to share the word together, to break bread together. And I think all these beautiful things that we see there, the result was prayer, as we said. Um, The result was the presence and the miracles and the power. Um, You know, all these things took place. They all shared together. There was not a needy one amongst them. And so God was doing an incredible work, you know. And that... that, um, they shared, they, they, they shared the apostles' teaching. That's the canon of scripture that we talked about. Do you remember that? They were going, they were looking at what the apostles were saying. Koinonia is fellowship. That's deep sharing of life together. That's holistic. That's kingdom family. That's shalom, community, well-being. Come on! We can be the church when we are in the presence of God. All these things are our inheritance as the people of God. Amen? And they were breaking bread, celebrating and sharing life together. So that's the third one. We receive our inheritance as a kingdom family when we're in the presence of God. Then fourthly, prioritize, prioritize seeking God gives soul satisfaction. When you prioritize seeking God, you know your soul is satisfied. You're at peace. You have joy. You know, King David said this. He prioritized God's presence. He said, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry land where there is no water. You know, he had a habit of meeting with God early. Do you have a habit of meeting with God every day? His soul, he recognized that his soul needed God. He didn't think it was the YouTube that was going to satisfy. He didn't think it was the Game Boy that was going to satisfy. He knew that his soul needed God. What's the latest one? Come on. He didn't realize it, was, it wasn't switch that, that he needed. <laughs> <You know? laughs> His soul needed God. Nothing wrong with those things, by the way, just that they have to be in the right place. Amen? Um, so I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. God, he knew God was best. He knew God was going to refresh his soul. Um, um, My lips shall praise you because um, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while you live. I will lift up my hands in your name. He prioritized holistic praise. He didn't just say, thank you, Jesus. He said, thank you, Jesus. He said, I thank you, Jesus. You know, and he also lifted his hands up. Sometimes he did a little dance. You know what I mean? He, He prioritized worshiping God holistically in every way. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. He knew that God was a God of fatness there, and that it, today we're trying to get rid of fatness, aren't we? But, um, but, um, <laughs> but <laughs> fatness in the Bible means abundance. It means prosperity, yeah, blessing. So he, he, was, he was rejoicing in the fatness, in the God's abundance, amen? Um, you see, we need, to be a bit, we need to be a bit more biblical these days, yeah? <laughs> And when I remember you on my bed, I meditate you in the night watches because you have been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of your wings, I will rejoice. My soul follows close behind you. Your right hand upholds me. He made space for God even at night. And he had faith in God's goodness and power. Amen. 
And so that is what we need to do to just prioritize time with God. So prioritizing seeking God gives soul satisfaction. You'll find a joy, you'll find a peace, you'll find a fulfillment uh, when you're like that. And people will say, what's that silly look on your face? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you've known the presence of God. Um, seeking God, um, number five, when we seek God through trials, we become mature and lack nothing. This is the difficult one, isn't it? Seeking God in trials brings maturity and provision. And when we, we, we seek God in those times, you actually find that some of your most profound times, you know, in God, when you're going through a tough time and you praise him anyway. Um, and consider it pure joy, we're told, when we meet these various trials. Why? Because as we persevere, it, uh, um, it produces something, perseverance. And that works in us, maturity, completeness, lacking in nothing. So if you're going through a tough time, there's a process sometimes you're going through. But God's ultimate goal is to bring you to lacking nothing. You know, we've all had times of financial struggle. Some of you might have times now. Or we've all had crisis, maybe in health or in different things. And praising God through those times, even with tears coming down your eyes, actually is bringing you to a place of maturity, into a place of strength, and where God's provision will ultimately be there, you know. And um, I remember times when I went through really tough times, and God just said, praise me. And I remember, like, driving in a car. Dri I think I was driving up the M1 that time, and I was just looked like a madman. I'm praying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. There's tears coming down my eyes, and all the other drivers are getting out of the way. And, thank you, Jesus. No. <laughs> and there's times when we just need to praise God when it's really tough. I think I've even had times in the streets where I've just lifted my hands to praise God just to say, I don't care. God is the most important thing here. And praising him through those tough times. And God comes through and God completes us and God matures us. And God provides for us in those difficult times, you know. And um, God will also, you know, if, if any of you lacks wisdom, then he should ask God who gives generously without finding fault and it will be given you. At times you just need to, are you praising him in that just asking for wisdom as well. What are you saying right now? I remember there's a time when I had a tax bill and I couldn't pay this tax bill. In fact, I was really concerned and I was up half the night and I said, I was being a bit facetious to God. I was praising God because God said, praise him in the tough times. And I said, but how are you going to deal with this, God? How are you going to actually deal with it, you know? So I'm praising him in the tough times and, and, I was, and then I'm being facetious. I'm saying, you know, you... What, what did you do, Jesus, when you had tax? Oh, you took money out of the fish's mouth. Where's the fish, Lord? You know, where's the fish, you know? And I'm just praising him through this tough time. And then God just dropped something in my heart. He says, Alex, go and see your accountant. And you know, sometimes you want to argue with God because you can't see what difference that will make. You've already been given the tax bill. Have you ever argued with God when you felt he was telling you something, yeah? It seems awkward. It seems annoying. Anyway, I listened to him, and I phoned up my account. He said, yeah, come up by all means. I can give you a couple of hours. So I got in my car. He, he was in um, the Oxford area. So I drove all the way up there, got there, got all my receipts out, dumped them on his desk and said, look, and there, there's the bill. That's what they're saying I owe. He said, give me, give me 15 minutes. We went quiet. I sat there. He just went through everything. And I think at the time it was 1,800 pounds. At that time, that was a lot of money to me. That's quite a few years ago. I know, I know that's, that's peanuts to all of you guys out there. But anyway, at the time, it was a lot of money. And, um, and um, at the end of it, he said, Alex, they don't, you don't owe them 1,800 pounds. They owe you 1,800 pounds. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Jesus. And if I hadn't gone, if I'd just gone in my own strength and not listened to what God said to do, then I wouldn't have got the money out of the fish's mouth. Amen? And so I got the money from them. And in fact, it worked out to 2,400, but my accountant took some of that, so it did work out to 1,800 in the end. <laughs> but that's okay, praise the Lord. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting anything, so there we go. <laughs> um, so seek God in the trials, and somehow the provision will come through. We can't say how, but God works everything for good to those who love him. God will show us his secrets when we seek his presence. Do you know, there's something, God releases secrets to you when you really seek him. And there's a, a scripture that says, who is the person who fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way he chooses. His soul will dwell in prosperity and his descendants will inherit the land. The secret of the Lord is for those who fear him. In other words, another version says, God will confide in you, in those who fear him, and he will make them know his covenant. There's something about just honoring God Keep honoring God, even when it's tough, even when you feel like you want to run away, even when you feel like it's too much. Keep honoring God and coming into the presence of God. And you know, he lets you know his secrets, Alex, da, 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 da. and he whispers things to you. And there's things he'll show you. And it's really amazing. It's beautiful. Sometimes he doesn't want you to share those with anybody. 
It's just a, something between you and him. Or something for you to pray about. And then, as well as God showing you his secrets, um, we will flow in the rhythms of his grace and rest. This is important in our time of stress and strain and everything. When we really um, seek God's presence, there's a new flow in us. And there's rhythms of grace and rest. So Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. See, God has a different way of doing things. But I just need to do this. I'm a, I'm a list person. I've got my list today, God. Learn from me, Alex. Yeah, but I've got my list. Learn from me, Alex. Do that one right now. The rest is going to sort itself out. But the rest is going to sort itself out. But the rest is going to Okay, God. Learn from me. Amen? And you will what? Find rest. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is comfortable. And my burden is light. So there's something about being in the uncomfortable that you can be comfortable in when you're learning from God. It's a resting place. I like the message Bible, the way it puts it. It says, are you tired, worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. So there's a learning process when we're in the presence of God. He shows us new ways of doing things. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So flow in the rhythms of God's grace. And finally, number eight. Praise the Lord. We will renew our strength. We will renew our strength. And Isaiah says, but they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings as eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. So take time to rest in God's presence. Just take time. Whatever it is for you, putting on some worship, Dancing before the Lord in your bedroom. Maybe you won't dance before the Lord up here like a, a Dorcas or a Colleen. But maybe you'll dance before the Lord in your bedroom. Or maybe you will one day dance up here because when you're dancing in your bedroom, God says, I want you to dance up there. That's called obedience. And obedience brings blessing. Amen. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> so, but, but God will guide you as you listen to him. Maybe, you sh you know, maybe you're someone who's in silence before God. Or maybe you're walking through a forest or a country lane or the park but however spend time just listening and being with God and you'll be surprised that God renews your strength it's God who does it it doesn't matter if you're 20 or if you're 50 it doesn't matter if you're 30 or if you're 70 it doesn't matter if you're 40 or if you're in your 90s Myrtle God will renew your strength amen and you will mount up on wings like eagles you will run and not grow weary and your walk and not faint as you come into the presence of God. So let's um, just come into the presence of God right now and just sit before him. I'll, I'll give you all of these just in case you want to quickly be reminded of them. But let's um, come into the presence of God right now and uh, just lean on him. Lord Jesus, right now we just come into your presence. Thank you, Lord. Lord, there's lots of things to think about. There's lots of things that are presented to us to worry about. But Lord, we want to be a people that just make that space in the day to seek you. Like King David, early will I seek you. You said seek and you will find. So Father, I pray for everyone here that they will find peace of mind, soundness of heart, wisdom from on high, clarity about the way forward, light through darkness, ease through troubled times, peace through the storm, shalom and well-being through times that have been traumatic. That as we wait on you, we will know who we are. We will rise up on wings like eagles. That there'll be a joy in our heart that is our strength. Because in your presence is fullness of joy, and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore.